Thank you, thank you so much. Very happy to be here. I'm really happy to see that. By show of hand, who consider himself or herself as blockchain positivist? Yeah, okay, the job is done already. I'm really happy. So really happy and honored to be here. Um, I'm, I've been actually watching that space, blockchain and Web3 uh, in sustainability for quite some years. In case you've been not around, I don't know, maybe you were traveling or not at all aware, I have a good news and a bad news for you. The, the, good, so the bad news <laughs> is that you don't know about all these topics here, which maybe represent the dark side of the crypto, uh, things like uh, the bored apes, uh, DGENs, recently obviously the FTX, and it's difficult to talk about one industry, you know, the industry as a whole, uh, as one industry, because there's so much more and more impactful and more bright than this reality. So the positive news is that you can still catch up with all these topics, which also carry their uh, bunch of jargon, right? Refi, SSI, DSI, UBI, uh, and you will hear a lot of this uh, jargon also a little bit in the presentation. I can't cover, cover it all because it's become such a big industry nowadays, and this is the work we've tried to do at Positive Blockchain. It's basically also curate that community and database of projects and startups that are active globally around multiple use cases. Um, we do this with a number of volunteers, but also university associations. So I invite you to go to the website, download the database. There are soon more than 1,500 records. These are all projects and startups um, um, active in that space. So what have we seen? Well, we've seen a lot of projects in blockchain for good, or call it blockchain for sustainability or for social impact, uh, from land registries, digital identities, agriculture, community currencies, and maybe I'll highlight a some of them. I can't go much in details because we don't have time, but also just give you insights and a little bit what's going on in the ecosystem. It's still a very early industry in my mind. Um, we've seen a lot of startups that don't make it to the maturity phase. Um, Actually, from all the projects we listed from the beginning, uh, a good third of those don't exist anymore for different reasons. Two examples here, mobilized construction, they try to decentralize infrastructure road repairs in Kenya. And crypto corals, they were maybe a little bit too early in 2018 to apply the crypto kitties to coral reefs. I think they would qualify for a good refi project nowadays, and, and, and nowadays there are some of them that are picking up that work. Projects also need a very long time to experiment, and I think this morning we also talked about that. It takes time to scale. This is a timeline of the UN uh, World Food Program initiatives in refugee camps in Jordan and Bangladesh. It's a four-year time frame to get to one million people impacted, which in itself is a, is a big impact, but we need to be aware that it's, it's going to take time, right? We start with a pilot, proof of concept, and then need to scale up. There's been a lot of government and public institutions that have you know, joined the rally in the blockchain for good space. Um, the UN and UNICEF have really been in the forefront. UNICEF launched Crypto Fund already two or three years ago. They launched an innovation fund specially for blockchain startups. They invade, invested in eight startups uh, last year, some of which that are, for example, bringing internet connectivity to school. And I think it's really positive to have such players. Using crypto for donation and philanthropy is obviously a simple and natural use case that has become also mature with the Giving Block. Um, it's a US company that helped more than 2,000 nonprofit to use crypto donations. And I think we've all seen the impact it had, for example, during the Ukraine crisis um, and war uh, to move in such a, a small amount of time, um, a high quantity of uh, funds. Supply chain, I think we'll talk about it today. Uh, WWF for phishing, uh, food traceability, drug, um, you know, fight against counterfeiting in the drug space or minerals. Um, some of you may have heard about the plastic bank, right? This project collecting and preventing bottles, plastic bottles for entering the oceans. They're still around. There are more than 610 communities in the world that are actively working with plastic bank. Etherisk is a German startup uh, from Munich. They rolled out to thousands of farmers last year their micro insurance for crop insurance. 
And we have more examples. Um, in the past few years, we've seen more and more projects in the topic of people empowerment, um, universal basic income, community currencies. For example, you see here grassroots economics, especially active in Eastern Africa, to design currencies for local communities. Um, Collectivo, they've been co-developed by the Curve Lab here in Berlin. Uh, they actually launched in Curaçao as a framework and also currencies for communities over there. Obviously, universal basic income, I cannot not talk about circles, also from Berlin, or good dollar. And maybe one last example, uh, we've seen the <clears throat> more and more innovation in the agricultural space where farmers are sometimes sensitive to hyperinflation and market instability. So now they are stable coins based on agricultural grains and commodities that can also create new financial solutions for them and commodity trading platforms that remove intermediaries. Obviously, there are still a lot of challenges, and we could talk for hours about that. Our user experience, interoperability, where do I find developers, time to scale, access to capital. One of the big challenges that all of us have heard a lot is it consumes too much energy, right? <laughs> and maybe I hope we don't talk about this so much in the next years because there have been a lot of new blockchain and DLT platforms. Um, layer 1 or Layer 2 protocols that came to reduce en electricity consumptions, some of which that are competing with the electricity cost of a transaction on Visa. And actually, a lot of infrastructure uh, platforms like Silo, Algorand, uh, Nier, Cardano, they are also very active in that sustainability space. And I think it's a really positive thing. Last year, we had the Crypto Climate Accord, which is a mobilization from the industry to aim for like a decarbonized crypto industry by 2030. We also see more and more research. For example, the Crypto Carbon Rating Institute uh, is continuously monitoring the electricity consumption and carbon emissions across many networks. And obviously, we all watched the merge, the switch uh, of Ethereum from proof of work to proof of stake. Um, at the COP27 last week or two weeks ago, there was a lot of talk about Web3 and climate. And actually, Ethereum announced the climate platform, which is a way to, to kind of compensate for all the emissions that happened in the network of Ethereum previously to the merge. So <clears throat> we'll see how it unfolds. And it stops here. There are more slides. Can you, yeah, maybe you can just connect back to the slides. Sorry for that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think the, the next topic is about ecosystem. Um, you guys are part of a very vibrant ecosystem with uh, obviously the blockchain coalition with Birdchain, we've seen a lot of these ecosystems that have been really focusing on sustainability and for good. I can think about the, the Climate Collective. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's just get back on track. A few slides back. Oh, I can do that, right? Okay. Yeah, so these are some of the, and I mean, you get the slides as well if you want to, to, to get, get them and learn more about all these initiatives. I think these are also great places to learn, uh, learn about use cases and also network with people. Uh, so some of them come directly from infrastructure providers like Hyperledger, Ethereum, Silo. Uh, you have the Climate Change Coalition, um, the ReFi DAO. Um, some of them are a little bit more recent. For example, the World Economic Forum, they just launched a few weeks ago, a crypto sustainability coalition, um, and yeah, more to come. Grand program, I believe, have been also very uh, transformative and helpful, especially for grassroots initiatives to you know, come up with a project and get funds to get the pilots and then get to scale. Gitcoin, obviously, but also project funds from Cardano, Chainlink, Ethereum, Silo, I invite you to look at that. This one is the latest one. It's the ReFi FutureQuest grant pool of about $1 million. 
Actually, they extended the deadline. It's on the 7th of December, so if you want to still participate, you will have time. And that leads me to the last topic, from DeFi to ReFi, or Regenerative Finance, which is kind of an extension of DeFi, which people talk a lot, really a lot <laughs> about, and I think it's good, since about last year. Uh, and ReFi is basically um, a way to apply regenerative principles where the market is failing in coordination. Think about climate change. It's a big market failure. It's not recognizing that, for example, we need to seek balance and we need to view wealth holistically. There's financial capital, but there's also human and natural capital. And so with ReFi, we're trying to integrate all these logics using the power of decentralization and blockchain uh, tools and frameworks. What's quite amazing as well is all these projects in this ReFi ecosystem, they kind of build on top of each other's with protocols that are interoperable, with governance that is really clear, a bit like DAOs, um, and I'm really excited also to see uh, what we'll see emerge from that ecosystem. An example is something people talk a lot about. It's kind of on top of the hype cycle right now. <laughs> it's a, the carb carbon market, right? It's one of the sustainability issue, far from being the main or the, the, the only one. Um, but we see a big ecosystem of startups and solution providers that try to fix issues in the voluntary carbon market, especially, but in, in carbon markets overall. Some of them focus more on the supply side uh, for you know, funding environmental projects before they happen, or for example, registering data and measuring and verifying data at the level of the project. And then they can create directly native tokens that will be on-chain representing a carbon credit. And then you have those like Tukan, Klima, Senken, they are actually all in Berlin as well. Um, they are focusing more on the demand side, so creating the trading infrastructure and marketplaces for people to exchange digital tokenized carbon credits and retire and offset them. Just a few examples of them, and I invite you to look them up because it's really interesting. Open Forest Protocol is kind of trying to build this decentralized protocol for verifying forestries and generate carbon credits from it. And the same with Blue Carbon, with Open Earth uh, Protocol. So they're working on marine restoration credits. And the last one, I have to mention it because I work there. <laughs> uh, Verity Tracking, uh, so it's also applying the same regenerative uh, logic in uh, feedstock that uh, get converted into biofuels um, to, for example, find alternatives to uh, traditional fossil fuel, for example, for airline or heavy duty. So we're registering carbon emissions through the entire value chain of biofuels and proving the case for the sustainable attributes of biofuels. And that's it. I just invite you to learn more about ReFi. I think it's a beautiful catalyst of what Web3 and sustainability can be. Um, ReFi podcast, which is available everywhere, and Spotify is amazing. There's a lot of great content or the ReFi DAO blog. And with that, I wish you great sessions in the afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm looking at the time, but I think we have uh, the possibility and the time for one question. So might there be a question from the audience? <coughs> If not, we're saving time and I'm still around and I'm also in Berlin, so happy to connect with everybody in Berlin. <laughs> yeah, that's true, but I, I might have a question to you. Oh, okay. Because okay. you, were, you were saying um, that you hope it's not going to be too much about energy consumption in the future. So looking at next year, what might be a wish from your side for your initiatives? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, there are still problems to solve, so I don't want to say, oh, we're done with that, right? Um, I see a lot of, for example, protocols and projects that can directly, based on protocol, offset um, and you know, account and offset for the emissions of every single transaction. You know? So I think as we mature and as solutions emerge in, in that Lego world, I'd like to see them uh, yeah, take scale. And for all the other projects and protocols that are not yet decarbonized or low energy, yeah, we have to address it. And maybe we find something for Bitcoin, which is still a big issue, but I mean, it, 
it's part of the different world, right? Bitcoin is not blockchain, and there are many segments, and we have to address them one at a time. And if you build a solution in blockchain for good, well, use technologies that follow these regenerative economies concepts, for sure. You have to be environmental aware. So, yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very mm -hmm. much.